those days I, I actually uh, practiced uh, in some of these uh, hospitals in Bangalore. Uh, the names are Manipal, St. Philomena's. Most of these uh, doctors would know these names actually. So um, during that time, one of the days actually, you know, we got a child after seven years and uh, my husband was struggling a lot. He was highly into junk food. He didn't have any of the other habits like alcohol, smoking, any of those things. What was his major addiction? His addiction was food. So he goes to all these places. He used to eat like this. And in early 30s, you know, he is he was 110 kgs. He's six to feet, but that itself was huge. He was his waist circumference was, if I remember correctly, 118 or 21. And um, one of the days that, you know, that time I was pregnant, and my mother-in-law came to take care of me. So actually, he went to pick her up from the uh, place and uh, on the way back, he was not able to drive. So I got a phone call and the phone call says that my husband is uh, admitted in Baptist front of the hospital on the way. And when I went there, actually, he's in the cardiac ICU because his BP shot up so high. It was 210 by 100 and something or something like that. And, uh, you know, like cardiac evaluation done, multiple things are done. And, you know, finally, we understood that uh, he's already getting into an early metabolic disease. On top of his, his, his highly stressful life also gave him panic attacks. You know, some medications were required at that moment in time, but a short period of time. But then you know, during the course of time, uh, we got our child and he was taking the child up, actually. He was carrying the baby in his hand and uh, getting into the steps. He was not able to climb the steps, actually. So that moment in time, he decided that enough is enough. I don't want any medications. He was already on BP medication that time, hyperuricemia. He already underwent a kidney, uh, this uh, robotic surgery because there were like large two stones in the kidney. So he was fed up of all these medications. <laughs> so he decided that let me start something. That was in 2012 or so. And, and um, he started uh, taking SAS to all the field of chronic lifestyle diseases like diabetes, cholesterol, you know, hypertension, those kind of things, actually. So that, that was a more, more of a nutraceutical research, some knowledge I had. So, but I had a lot of network during that time. Even MD Anderson a Research Institute, I had some doctors who were, you know, who I, I could, uh, um, you know, talk to them and, you know, get guidance. So got guidance as we started changing our lifestyle. Within a span of eight months, he came down to around eight, 90 kg or 88 kg. Uh, you don't believe uh, the parameters which we re uh, rechecked, none of the things were you know, at that range, it all became normal. So this is something which was, okay, maybe we thought, okay, a lot of prayers happened. Because he was only early 30s. His father died very uh, uh, young, actually, in his 50s. So people were very scared. Uh, you know, multiple things we thought, okay, you know, like it's a combination of all the factors. We did dietary changes. We did, uh, you know, he, he started running. He started doing even ma half marathons and all. And definitely a lot of spirituality, prayers, meditation, all these things. Even now, we I do twice a day meditation. So that's how we thought, okay, why don't we explore this uh, possibility of uh, something with the nutrition and lifestyle in managing and reversing diseases. It's not only preventing diseases, even reversing or long-term remission. As medical doctors, we do not say reversal. We say long-term remission of these diseases. So that's how we got into this, actually. So lifestyle has a huge impact. Back. As Dr. Sandeep was mentioning about, so lifestyle, what is the importance of lifestyle? You know, as medical advances, technology advances has brought in a lot of changes. Actually, uh, low, over the last increased from 40 years to 80 or 76 and 80. But we have added years to our life, but we haven't really added. Um, so we have added. Uh, longevity, what do you call that? We, we live longer, but li we live in disability. Most of the people by 45, 50 are having multiple disabilities on medication, procedures, therapies, multiple of those kind of things, actually. That's our whole thing. Uh, evidence-based medicine, what we call is evidence-based because it is developed based on last 100 years of research on lifestyle factors, including diet, exercise, meditation, or stress management, sleep, 
all of these factors coming put together made as a guideline. This was, as Dr. Ranjan said, it was initially developed by American College of Lifestyle Medicine. They formed the college, American College of Lifestyle Medicine. And from there, they started giving exams or certifications. That happened in 2017, the first exam. Now, actually, they have something called IBLM, International Board of Lifestyle Medicine, where doctors all across the globe can participate in this exam and get certified. So you will be IBLM certified to practice lifestyle medicine in your respective countries. So that's how the current scenario is actually. So this is a part of uh, modern medicine. This is not an alternative medicine. This is part of modern medicine. It's an evidence-based medicine. Um, and people who are wanting to know the history of lifestyle medicine, you can also watch some of these documentaries like um, Fox Over Knives. Um, Fox Over Knife is one. Second one is uh, What the Health. Many of them are there. I can actually share this information with the Dr. Ranjan. He will be able to share it with you all. So that's how my journey with the lifestyle medicine started. Uh, this moment in time, maybe 2014, 12, uh, 12 to 14, I was knowing only about the therapeutic nutrition part and the exercise part. I was not really understanding the lifestyle medicine as a whole, all the six pillars they have already shown, shown to you. So that has come into the picture the subsequent years. So let me also take you through some of my client stories. I have, uh, we, or, you know, my team has already catered to 2000 plus people with chronic lifestyle diseases only through lifestyle medicine, or manage or prevent. Many cases we are able to uh, bring uh, long-term remission, somebody with uh, HbA1c, the diabetic marker uh, from 13 or 13.7 or 12, 13 and all to five under, uh, you know, 5.7 within three to four months actually. But this is, this is a, um, you know, we can, we can call this as a remission, you know, but the people has to be on that lifestyle longer period of time to have that remission sustaining. Okay, so we, we are able to bring down uh, people uh, with the diabetes um, through lifestyle medication, lifestyle medicine uh, intervention. So this is another story. This guy, it was actually 60 plus. He came to us through one of our, you know, Indonesian client. Since we have a platform in us uh, through which we manage online platform, people come to us through this online platform. This person is a businessman in Kana, but a UK based guy. So he had some cardiac issues where his, uh, you know, like uh, functioning of the heart was coming down because of his overweight and related issues. And he had dyslipidemia, cholesterol problem and multiple other conditions. He went through a one year of intense lifestyle intervention where we put him through all the lifestyle medicine principles which I'm going to be talking subsequently so and uh, within I think one year but he's he's uh, there long term with us for maintenance but uh, he has completely reversed his uh, condition and the cardiologist was extremely happy that uh, you know he could lose that much weight at that uh, period in time which helped his uh, heart to work better this guy is a young guy since his 40s. He came to us with hypertension. He was so worried that he would die soon, especially during the initial Corona time. He was actually um, you know, already on medication, but um, it, since it was in an early phase, we told that we can actually reverse his condition through lifestyle changes. He was ready for it and we did it and he reversed his hypertension and dyslipidemia, cholesterol. This, uh, there are a lot of ladies like, like this, a lot of, lot of women in Indian context, they actually forget about their health because they take care of their families, their husbands, kids, in-laws. Finally, what will happen? Their health take a back, back seat. So a lot of women like this, uh, you know, by the time they are in their late 40s or early 50s, they are having multiple health conditions, not only diabetes, cholesterol, fibromyalgia, multiple other conditions, actually. So a um, lot of them ignore their condition. So as clinicians, we ask them to focus on their health their first actually and then you cater to other people so there are a lot of stories like this i don't want to be taking you through a lot lot of stories but uh, this is uh, one of the stories 
So uh, the whole aspect of lifestyle medicine, I think when you think about it, uh, if you go through the literature or you know the history of lifestyle medicine, you will understand the lot, this research was going on for the last 50, 40, 50 years. And people started understanding, or the researchers started understanding that it's not just the gene responsible for you to become uh, diabetic or hypertension. It's not only your gene, but there is something else playing a game. What they understood is the environment around it shapes the gene. We call it, you know, that there's something called epigenetics. There is something, a gene, you know, everybody knows that DNA. On top of it, there is something called epigenetics. This gen genes or the DNA part, you cannot do anything. We call it your uh, the body is actually loaded gun. Your genes are loaded gun. Your genes are loaded with preponderance for diabetes, cholesterol, hypertension based on your family. But to develop that or not is determined by your lifestyle. That epigenetic changes is brought in by the environment in which you are living, the kind of lifestyle you lead. So if somebody is coming from a family of like highly metabolic prone gene, do not worry. You take care of your lifestyle. You will not, you will prevent it very long term. Okay, so this is very important. This is just for the doctors in the group. Uh, you know, there are a lot of studies. You can get into the uh, internet and search for epigenetic studies. You will understand so much has gone into the picture, actually. So this will give you a, um, it open up a new whole world of epigenetics. This I don't have to explain. You all know that, actually, what all of the things which uh, leads to chronic diseases. It's the physical inactivity. No, but people were just sitting idle, not doing anything. Uh, unhealthy diet, tobacco, which is smoking, excessive alcohol. And people, you, you, you must be knowing that a lot of death, early death happens because of loneliness. There is no social connectedness. I was telling Dr. Ranjan in the morning that we are highly socially connected. We are at the other end of the spectrum. All the time we have people around actually. So that uh, is something which is lacking, especially in a urban uh, middle class and upper class families when the children goes out of the country for their studies parents are alone they don't have any social connections whole time they will be thinking if their thought processes are not aligned in a positive way they'll be thinking about a lot of negative stuff so that can also cause diseases so this actually is just to, for an understanding basically uh, as medical students we have learned okay there is there are like cause uh, causality of diseases that oh one part is the distal causes, that industrialization, lifestyle change because of that economic growth. We say that, oh, all these McDonald's and, uh, you know, the, the KFCs and all came into India and uh, we are all become sick. That is partly true because our generation, next generation is get, getting addicted to these kind of food. Another one is medic need. Uh, but it was uh, like in the process. And uh, ACLM, American College of Lifestyle Medicine, was formed, I think. Uh, you know, the journal has started coming into the picture from 2007, January. So it's almost like 15 years now. So, and uh, this, as I said, the certification started in 2015. Sorry, 2017, 10 years later. So what is lifestyle medicine? This, I think I have seen the slide while you were talking. Um, you know, lifestyle medicine is an evidence-based for to pre prevent, treat, and reverse diseases with the help of, there are six components they say. One is a healthy eating pattern. So the years of research, many years of research has shown that a healthy eating pattern means, okay, a predominantly whole food plant-based eating pattern. Predominantly means large component of it is um, non-cruelty, like there is no killing, there is no hurting, uh, this thing. So it's a whole food plant-based eating that large quantities of vegetables and fruits are included in the food, right? And also like other components I'll be discussing a little um, down. We have the slides to discuss a little more about that. Then regular physical activity. See this regular physical activity, if we are like on a nine to five sitting job, it's better to have a structured physical activity. This means you can plan a 30 minutes in the morning, 30 minutes in the evening, just basic walk should be sufficient. So that is that takes care of the cardiac component of it. Okay, and then you need to also have three, four other components, which I'll be discussing soon. Then, as I mentioned already, uh, restorative sleep. You need to have around six to seven hours of uninterrupted sleep. 
stress management, avoidance of risky substances like alcohol and smoking, positive social connections. These are the primary therapeutic modality used in lifestyle medicine. But you must be thinking that, oh, this is something, a generic guidance, which everybody knows about it. But the environment is such that, you know, people are not able to practice this to a level which maximizes their health. Okay, people, what, what, what people come to us actually in their 30s and 20s with the hyperlipidemia or even HbA1c or like highly elevated diabetes. So when we um, take the history, we understand that they know something little bit about health and lifestyle and things like that. They do like two hours of gymming, but after the gym, they come back and have a large meal with a lot of, uh, you know, um, milk and fat and a lot of other things. So it's not completely understood. So that's where the doctor's role comes. The doctor as a lifestyle medicine will be able to bridge the gap between the lifestyle and the body and the medical um, body and its function and the medical therapy. I'm not saying that every time lifestyle alone will work in a patient. Somebody with a 70-year-old with this latest part of CKD may require medications, but 80% of the early diseases can be reversed or brought into a long-term remission with lifestyle alone. So this is very important. And uh, I'm sure that right now, you know, as Dr. Ranjan mentioned, we have um, a ACLM's counterpart in India called Indian Society of Lifestyle Medicine. You can check the website, islm.org. This also will be sharing it later. And uh, whoever the doctors are there, you can just get into the site and see, you know, like um, the kind of uh, activity happening and also become a member. You can also certify with the uh, IVLM. Sorry. So this uh, part, again, for the doctors, because um, doctors in the group, why is it evidence-based? Because it is research-based. The data is taken from the past many years of research. You can see all the major um, medical bodies like ACC, uh, American Heart Association, Institute of Medicine Guideline, all of them have started implementing lifestyle first approach. Uh, at least they started uh, mentioning that part of it in their um, articles and journals and books and all actually. So that itself shows that this is actually being accepted by the medical community. I'm just going through this, brush through these studies. Some of the studies which I mentioned, which uh, gave us the kind of guideline. One of the thing is nurse study and uh, health professionals uh, study and follow up study, which are with a large number of people, like uh, lakhs actually. Nurse study itself is like around 1.25 lakhs or something. Health professional also in the same. So that is also for a period of 30 years. So 30 years. Uh, and also the quality of the data comes there also would be very good because they're all health professionals. They have some understanding of lifestyle and stuff. So um, huge data has come into the picture that from there, the lifestyle medicine guideline has been formed. Another, you know, many of these studies, you can see some Indian names here, high rates of diabetes reversal in newly diagnosed Indian Asian adults with type two diabetes with intensive lifestyle therapy. So you can see that Indian doctors are there, but I think it's in the US, but Indian doctors. Another one is DPP. Again, uh, it's like a 20 years old study uh, that uh, says that uh, type 2 diabetes can be better with a lifestyle when compared to a common drug called metformin. It was compared with metformin. You can see the graph also. And, uh, you know, then other studies, a lot of studies, other portfolio studies, many of these studies, and also this last um, this um, uh, decade, like to 2020 onwards, huge investment has coming into the picture with the relation to nutrition-based studies. So more and more data is going to come. People say that the last 30 years data, when you compare with the next 10 years data will be like multifold, tenfold. That level of research is happening in the field right now. Now, how do we practice lifestyle medicine? It's a challenge. I do agree that going through lifestyle change is a major challenge. People find it difficult, but with constant support, guidance, and nudging, people will be able to take up the lifestyle and sustain it life, you know, long term or lifetime. But uh, definitely we need a multidisciplinary team. You know, you cannot work alone. You know, physician should be the leader or the lifestyle physician should be the lead person in the 
uh, team, but you need to have a nutritionist, you need to have a fitness expert, you need to have meditation expert. You know, I'm Dr. Ranjan has asked me whether we can provide a small session for meditation. I do practice every day, but even now after four or five years of practice, I still follow guided meditation. I'm not able to do that level of uh, uh, thing right even now. You know, some people are good at it. Actually, I would also like to listen to uh, Dr. Ranjan's session if time permits. So that, that's what actually it needs a lifestyle physician. It needs uh, multiple of these components to make it successful, you know, to provide the best services to the people. This we already discussed, uh, healthy eating. Uh, so uh, what it says, actually, I'm going to come to one by one. So all these parameters, are, when you do that at a level, which will maximize health, for example, somebody with a 40-year-old coming with multiple health conditions and anxiety disorders, once you start adapting this lifestyle, what will be the end result at the end of three months or six months? I would say six months to one year is uh, what uh, uh, we should aim at because it shouldn't be a pressure for people to make those changes, actually. So it is like... A, Definitely their large values change, their energy level goes high, their condition gets better, you know, rather they may not require medication in the long run. There, you know, some people have noticed after doing all these things, there are a lot of people who took up running, you know, there are, there are three, four clients of mine who started uh, trekking, you know, one of them trek to Kilimanjaro, another one Himalaya stuff, you know, many of these, uh, you know, like they feel like, uh, you know, they have a lot of energy, they have transformed themselves, they've start to become the younger version of themselves actually. So that those are the benefits of these lifestyle changes. This part I'm not going to take up much because Dr. Ranjan's uh, meditation session itself will take care of this. I'm sure that that would be a wonderful session. But basically, um, as part of lifestyle medicine, um, you know, we call it stress management is a major thing. You know, every day, if you look at it, every day, if there is an unpleasant event happens, for example, you, you're wanting to come here, somebody passed, passed a negative comment or your mother-in-law saying something or your husband is saying something which is unpleasant, that moment in time your body's cortisol level goes high so what will happen the cortisol will cause a lot of um, uh, issues in your body so to counteract those kind of things you need to have a stress management tactic not only that you need to have self-awareness you know what you are how you want to live your life you know what you want to achieve how you want to provide to the society all these things should be well understood actually a kind of a mentoring is needed to understand oneself actually and then stress management stress management a large component is played by meditation. So in our book, you know, or the lifestyle medicine says, if you practice uh, one hour of meditation, mindful meditation for six days a week, for six months, you are, um, I, I would like to, we can use the scientific step here, right, Doc? Obviously. Yeah. So there is something called in the front of the brain called prefrontal cortex, which is the executive center of the brain, the decision making center of the brain. And there is something in the back or middle part of the brain called amygdala, which is the emotional center of the brain. Normally, a person will be always firing the emotional part. You heard something, you are reacting to it. You heard something, you are responding to it. And it creates a lot of issues, a lot of thoughts and things like that. And even happened. Okay, that uh, that if there is an unpleasant event happened, somebody uh, got sick, somebody told something bad about you or something like that. So you are actually not able to see that as an event. You are actually completely confusing that with the person, the scenario, everything. So that is the major cause of all the problems, actually. But if you start meditating six days a week for six months, if you do fMRI, functional MRI studies, that means your brain is put it into a MRI machine and see the connections. There is the this part, prefrontal cortex and the back of the brain called amygdala. The connection becomes very strong. The gray matter becomes very strong. That means you're able to connect that very well and able to like respond to the scenario much better. Okay, so the, the, it's very important to have these uh, uh, connections set properly. Please learn uh, some way of meditation. Any, any ways is fine, but start practicing daily. I do practice twice a day. And sleep. Uh, people who wants to um, learn more about it, there's a book called Why, you, Why Do We Sleep and What 
why you, why you have to do it actually it's a dr vitaker right do, do you remember dr ranjan that name of the doctor sorry i don't i think yeah it is somewhere here given i i can give this ppt it will be here given actually so sleep is an important component people who are not sleeping 6 to 8 hours uninterrupted please Uh, address this issue with your physician, lifestyle physician, or your spiritual doctor, whoever it is. Please start correcting it. It has a huge impact on our overall health. Avoidance of risky substances, which we uh, we all know that smoking is bad for health. Alcohol uh, is definitely bad for health. Lifestyle medicine, uh, actually, unlike the modern uh, medicine, we actually uh, ask people to not to use alcohol. Um, you know, if you're not started, you know, we it's better to not to have any kind of recreational drugs, alcohol, or smoke. So, which is injurious to your health. Physical activity, I have already mentioned. um it is um 150 minutes of that is very less i would recommend uh, 30 to 60 minutes of structured cardio um, activity every day which is can be walk brisk, brisk walk um running cycling swimming any any kind of uh, activity is fine whichever is applicable to you i do only walk because that's what i get you know i can uh, be on the call and do the walk actually but most of the other activities on a weekday it is not possible for me so 30 to 60 minutes but people who wanting to lose weight we always recommend more activity like uh, that is like 300 to 500 minutes of cardio a week which is like more than 90 minutes a day 90 minutes a day so what we can do as people who are not started activity even now what we can advise them or what we can do as people is actually start with the 15 minutes walk you know uh, you know people who are at home uh, you know not on a um, work schedule and all they can actually after every meal start walking 15 minutes inside the house you know later you can get out actually because you don't get that uh, stress of uh, like a long going for a long walk start with that actually so i said 30 to 60 minutes of moderate intensity cardio a week uh, so a day which is like 150 to 300 minutes of cardio a week uh, for weight loss we recommend 300 to 500 500 uh, minutes of physical at cardio a week and then we also recommend lifestyle medicine recommend two days a week strength training you we all know that you know we are prone for mus muscle loss as we age the sarcopenia is very common in south eastern population maybe because of the large quantity of the grains we consume so we need to have strength training re uh, regularly yeah i we recommend thrice a week or if you're doing every day strength training do alternate muscles give 48 hours interval or uh, rest period for your muscles to really recover then flexibility and stretches are an important part of our uh, lifestyle that normally yoga if somebody is you doing yoga yoga if somebody is you doing it takes care of three things one is strength training because some of these uh, stretches itself is body weight training second is it also takes care of flexibility and stretches it also takes care of your Uh, balance exercises if somebody is doing 30 minutes of yoga a day another 30 minutes of walk should be sufficient to take care of the physical activity part meaningful social relationships uh, i don't think a lot of uh, our generation has a lot of problems with it if you don't have in a friends and family and connections start building that actually it has a huge impact on your health span your longevity you live longer if you take all the blue zones the people are highly connected at at uh, 90 they have clubs where they go there and do social activities some kind of farming some kind of activities so ensure that you do have a very strong social network which includes your family your friends or other interest group like this so that is very important also like um, uh, you know training ourselves to go off these negative emotions a lot of negative feeling for people is something which everybody should inculcate you know at that moment in time somebody said something somebody did something forgiveness forgetfulness as something which we all have to inculcate another thing we always say people to do is gratefulness meditation gratefulness forgiveness meditation gratefulness meditation gratefulness meditation is something we are grateful for whatever we have we have health we have family we have uh, we, we have access to platforms like this 
we have good food in front of us, we have a good shelter, all these things are to be grateful for. This is something to be practiced on a day to day basis. Nutrition as a pillar. This is my speciality, but I, I don't know like how far I'll be able to cover it within this time frame, but I'll try to minimize as possible. So when you think about food, we always think about food in terms of pleasure, hunger. So we need to start changing our thinking about food to something, a thing which goes inside our body, nourish our body, talks to our each of the cells. And it says that, okay, let this person be healthy. Or another food going inside will say that, oh, give him disease. So it is an information which is going and connecting to other cells and giving eternal health or disease. So every time when you're sitting on your uh, dining table, ensure that you are taking the ones which is nourishing your body or which is giving you eternal health than giving you diseases, okay? Fundamental principles of nutrition as that, but that itself says that, okay, there are things which is required for our body. There are nutrients which is required in adequate quantity. For example, calcium, proteins, um, uh, vitamins, minerals, all these are required in a particular quantity for our body, okay? At the same time, you also don't require some of the things we're currently eating in that large quantity. For example, some nutrients called saturated fat, trans fat, cholesterol, um, excess sodium in the form of salt, excess sugar in the form of sweets, these are all not required in the body at that level. So we need to modulate it. We need to increase the quantity of the food which is required, like vitamins, minerals, and these things. We need to get in, uh, enough quantity. We need to reduce the quantity of certain food with, with which we are taking in larger quantity now. As I mentioned, sodium, salt, sugar, saturated fat, which is present in ghee, butter, those kind of things. So that I already I mentioned the slide, limit refined carbohydrate, trans fat, where is trans fat majorly coming from? Anybody? I'm muted, okay. Trans fat is majorly coming from, it's a hydrogenated fat, which is majorly coming from your um, baked food items, actually, baked items, actually. So that needs to be cut down. I, I'll finish it in a few minutes. Um, so a, a, a healthy eating pattern, you need to have fruits. How many fruits everybody consume a day? When I and assess a patient who comes to me, they do not eat even like uh, one fruit a day. Most of them eat like once in a week or twice in a week and all. You need to have two fruits uh, or two servings of fruits, two cups of fruits a day. Any fruit, ideally locally grown, seasonally, uh, sorry, locally, seasonally grown, locally available ones, because that is much nutrient rich because you, it doesn't have to travel for too long. It is not there in the fridge for too long. So locally available, seasonally grown fruits actually. Then vegetables, four to five servings of vegetables a day. So that uh, when we assess an Indian context, we are not even eating one cup. Two to four to five servings means two and a half to three cups of vegetables a day. We are not using our uh, kire, what we, tamil, uh, we call it kire, that is uh, the leafy greens, the, the colored vegetables in large quantity. We are not eating enough of those ones. We need to start incorporating those things in our food. Okay. And then uh, saturated fat. As I mentioned, ghee, butter, don't have to completely cut down, but ensure that uh, as per lifestyle medicine, we are not supposed to have uh, animal products, but if you're not on that level, you can definitely cut down those things to limit the impact, the negative impact actually. And definitely then you need to reduce the things with the sugar and uh, uh, other stuff actually, salt. You know, what we say, people, is actually per person, one pinch of salt per person per meal is what we recommend. This is how we design a plate for a person. Basically, um, any plate, a nine-inch plate, to be divided into four quadrants. Left half of the plate should be occupied by micronutrient-rich vegetables and fruits. Uh, we normally, what we do is we fill that plate, that three-fourth with grain, which is rice and roti and all. Instead, it should be produced, vegetables and fruits. Some portion of it can be a protein, which is like dal and rajma and those kind of things. Lower portion can be a grain, rice, millet, oats, and things like that, actually. I'm just going through some of the plates and start 
or making those changes or, uh, you know, so, so we, after seeing the cells so for lunch onwards, you start making these changes. So half of the bill, as I've already mentioned, half of the plate should be filled with vegetables and fruits. Um, one fourth of the plate with uh, protein rich portion, which can be any type of dal and uh, um, rajma beans and all. The last portion can be with the uh, grains. So some plates, which is shared by some clients, it's very simple plates, it's odds. And we do not use any of the nuts and seeds, uh, basically like uh, you know, chia seeds and flax seed and fruits. You can see the Indian, South Indian meal. Uh, you can see that dal, sambar, dose and fruits. Uh, we give it like that because the calories has to come down for people to lose weight. Lunch plate, something like this, rice, a lot of vegetables, and uh, this is black chana. And you can see another plate, um, a different type of legumes you can see actually, you know, black bean, um, pinto bean, uh, this chana, this is another one. This is a typical South Indian plate, a North Indian plate, you know, methi, uh, paratha, vegetables, and um, horse gram. And methi paratha with this thing and uh, rajma. You can see a lot of legumes in the plate. Uh, if uh, you want, uh, Dr. Rajan, I can share a lot of our client plates. You can share it in your platform so that people can start adapting. So that's how it is. So what is the importance of um, this thing? Lifestyle medicine wants to see incorporate lifestyle medicine practices in our regular setup. Patient will have a trust and connect with the doctor. That itself will heal the process, right? The healing there itself start. <clears throat> and more patient touch points. So not, not only for patient, because there are tools and um, resources, you know, where the patient can be in touch with the doctor. And uh, definitely patients also feel empowered. It's not the patient alone. We're transforming the whole family and later the whole society is transforming. Ultimate goal is 15, 20 years down the line, we have a good set of healthy, happy, productive people. That is the aim of lifestyle medicine. I think that uh, stops my PPT. I run a company called uh, Invest on Health. You can check IOH actually invest on health. And we do have a multidisciplinary team which provides these services to people, constant guidance and support. Actually, you know, that's how it, the whole thing works. My email ID is Regina, R A J E E N A, Regina dot Shahin, S H A H I N at gmail.com.